I've got the Poco F2 Pro here. This is also known as the Xiaomi K30 Pro. And then it has like a Zoom version and some other rebranded names like that. It has the code name LMI. And today I want to talk about the Lineage OS 17.1 ROM. It's an unofficial ROM. I want to give a quick look of this ROM. Uh, give a couple of benchmark comparisons of uh, Lineage OS 17.1 compared to MIUI. I believe I was on MIUI 12 at the time of doing the initial benchmarks. Uh, and then just give an overall, I guess, review, just my user experience of this device, of this ROM on this device, as I've been using it about for the past week, week and a half. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was just how slimmed down and unbloated this ROM is compared to MIUI. This includes all of the pre-installed ROMs or pre-installed apps that come with the ROM compared to MIUI. But it also means that you're going to be having less features built into the ROM as compared to MIUI. So if that's something that you're okay with, then uh, Lineage OS is probably a good choice for you compared to MIUI. That's a big reason why I prefer these AOSP-based type ROMs over a Chinese, very bloated uh, ROM like MIUI, even like Color ColorOS, uh, even as uh, ASUS's uh, skin just has not appealed to me in many, many years. Uh, I like the look of stock Android, even though it comes with less features. I have root access, so the important features that I actually want and need, I can get back. So another thing I wanted to mention in this quick look of the ROM is the benchmarks and how it compares to MIUI. So I know these are not going to be apples to apples comparisons because I do not have a screen brightness luminescence meter right now. I looked into getting one, they're pretty expensive. I tried to order one, but the eBay seller said they are out of stock now. So I'm just gonna wait until the holiday season's over before getting one. Uh, so again, this is not going to be perfect comparisons, but it will give you a, a good idea of what to expect when you switch from MIUI over to Lineage OS or a custom ROM based on Lineage OS, which a lot of them are. So what I did here is I ran PC Mark's uh, battery work, I believe it was battery work 2.0, a benchmark that they do. Yeah, work 2.0 battery life test. And what it does is it will run a bunch of different type of routines from editing videos to playing videos to browsing the web, looking at charts a lot of different stuff that tax the CPU and GPU in different ways. So since I cannot measure the screen brightness, what I did was I just opened up the screen brightness slider on MIUI. I slid it over to the middle and then I did the uh, benchmark here. Uh, the application and benchmark ran for over 20 hours and here is the uh, benchmark scores for the various tasks it did in that test. So you can see we have 9,000, 7,000, almost 6,000, 9.4, 24,000, and 7,000. So after I installed the Lineage OS 17.1 ROM on this device, I did the exact same thing. I uh, enabled airplane mode, and then I forced Wi-Fi on the exact same conditions that I had set up on for MIUI. I went into screen brightness. I set it to right in the middle. However, whenever I did this, this test, I got a much different battery life score 
compared to MIUI. You can see it dropped down to 12 hours. Well, you can also see the performance scores were higher. Now, some of these scores are within the margin of error, so take that with how you will. But it's safe to assume that Lineage OS gives you a slight boost in performance based on these scores. We're at 10,300 on the first line instead of 9,300. We have 7,200, 7,100, so that one dropped a little. We have 6,100 on the third one, so that went up a little. The writing 2.0, we have 9,400, and that went up to 12,000. Photo editing got 27,000 instead of the 24,000. And then data manip manipulation, we got 7,900 instead of 7,100. Now this battery life result was very, very different than the other one I had. So again, since I cannot measure screen brightness, I have to assume this is due to MIUI and Lineage OS using different screen brightness thresholds. So what I did is I dropped the uh, screen brightness down all the way to the bottom here, as you can see, which is actually still pretty bright. Like usually I drop it a little more whenever I'm recording videos because it doesn't blow, it helps to not blow out the recording, but I just couldn't. So it's very possible that Lineage OS just does not let you lower the screen brightness enough. And because of that, the scale that it has whenever I set it to the middle is a lot different than before. So I did a test again, drop the screen brightness down. And when I did the test that time, you can see it, the uh, battery life result was better. The performance was about the same all the way across. But the overall battery life, which as you would expect, because the screen eats up so much of the battery life. So again, I can't give a one-to-one -one comparison for you today. This is just going to be a quick look at the uh, ROM. So the other uh, small test that I did, I measured the uh, wake locks to make sure with better battery stats, just to make sure that the device didn't have any type of uh, kernel wake locks that, were, that would keep the device on throughout the night and prevent it from going into deep sleep mode. Although I am using nap time, so I'm sure that helped to um, keep that idle battery drain down. I did some tests with some 4K videos in Plex, played well. I did some simple video game tests on here. They all played without any hiccups or um, most bugs. I will say when I was playing the Star Wars game, it had an issue sometimes connecting to the Google Play Games account. Like this, it needed the account to recognize my old account. But then as I was playing it, in the middle of a battle, it popped up and said it couldn't connect to my Google Play Games account or something. I've seen that uh, service crash in the background once, um, as well as another crash. But that was it. I've seen two crashes. I've had multiple reboots on the device. I've gone a few days without rebooting. It's just these small bugs that you would expect from an unofficial port of a custom ROM that's available right now. Another thing I tested was the camera. So the stock camera that comes with the ROM works, but it's not going to give you the best quality. Normal stock cameras on custom ROMs never give the best quality. But I tried the Google Cam port that I have previously done a tutorial on on this uh, YouTube channel. So you can find that video linked in the video description. I did. I loaded the same XML profile for that so that it will bring in all of the extra goodies and features that come along with that. And the tests I did um, actually showed a visual improvement. I did a sample image of this hat 
This was the stock image, the stock camera. Then I took a picture of this hat with my Galaxy Note 10 Plus and its stock um, camera. And it was very clear that the Google or the Galaxy Note 10 Plus beat out this stock image. But whenever I switched over to the Google camera port and used it and its, um, you know, Google Magic, the quality was very comparable. So overall, I've been very happy with the Lineage OS 17.1 unofficial port of the ROM for the Poco F2 Pro and the Redmi K30 Pro. I've done some emulation, played some games, did some backups. So far, everything's working as it should. Now, this ROM does have some uh, bugs that come with it. So here is the thread, the XDA thread for this ROM. We have a list right here of what is confirmed to be working. So we have most of the hardware, if not all of the hardware, is up and running. But again, there are some bugs. There are some very specific ways of how to install this device or this ROM. So be sure to be aware of those bugs and keep updated in the XDA thread if you just want to know what are the latest changes that are coming with this ROM. So there you have it. That is a quick look of the Lineage OS 17.1 custom ROM that is currently available for the Redmi K30 Pro, the Poco F2 Pro, and all devices that share the LMI codename.